Hey what's up guys and welcome to another Iron Man episode. In this one I'm going to start off by getting the last bars I need for the Masterwork gear and I'm going to put a list on the screen right now. This is all the ores I'm still missing and you might be wondering why I still need Runite. It's because you also need Runite bars to make the Elder Runite bars. So I have to get basically 1200 of the rune bars and also for the Bane bars they actually take two to make one of the Bane ores so that's why I need a bit more of them as well. But uh, yeah, let's get into the grind and I use all my stone spirits. A lot later, I have now done a lot of mining. I am at 15.5 million mining experience. And if I go into my furnace here, I have collected all the ores that I need for everything. So all I have to do now is just smith these 600. I have to get 600 more rune bars with uh, the ores I have. To be able to make the elder rune bars, I have 1000, almost 200 bainite ore, but I don't exactly need all the 600 because I already have some concentrated alloy bars and some enriched. So all in all, I have all this stuff that I need and now I just have to smith all the bars. That should be the last one, let's deposit those and I now have around 600, more than 600 of each bar. So now it's just time to make all of these, as you see they require one of each. So I'm going to end at roughly 600 concentrated alloy bars, make them into enriched ones and then immaculate ones. And then uh, glorious bars. Honestly, this has been such a long smithing grind. I've been doing this for like, I think 11 hours now. And uh, I have everything I need after this one to make the full masterwork set. And oh my god, is it nice. Uh, okay, I have the uh, 11 plates that I need to make all these items. I already have the boots. And uh, just have to make the unfinished versions. And then I have all the rivets to make the actual items. So... Now I just have to actually smith the masterwork pieces and we have the armor. So in my inventory I now have the full unfinished riveted masterwork armor. As I said the boots I already have in the bank. Surprisingly the smithing experience I got from this was basically zero. I think I gained like 50k from this entire uh, like 11 hour grind. So that is kind of weird. But uh, yeah, it's time to make all the items and it is just a few seconds for each of the items. So I can just do it in this one clip. But uh, master work, work helmet done. And I think before this I had a bandos helmet. So a tier 70 to tier 90 right away. And all of this is power armor. So it is very, very nice. And you can also make the elite masterwork gear but that takes a very long time and you need to farm i think rise of the six for it because you need to get the malevolent energies make the armor disassemble it and you get some specific items that you actually make these into elite which takes quite some time it's a big grind so i'm not going to go for that right now i might be doing it in the near future in like a casual way but I'm very happy with just having the normal masterwork anyways as I was using, as I said, tier 80 or tier 70 melee items in uh, most of these slots. So let's go over the upgrades here, what I had before and what I will have now. For the chest I had a tier 80 Saros augmented anima core body and this is from God Wars 2 and now I have a tier 90 so that is just a 10 step level upgrade pretty much. For the helmet it is a big one, as I said I had the Bandos helmet before and now I have the Masterwork helmet. For the legs it was the same, I had Bandos and now I have Masterwork. And I was most of the time using a Death Touch bracelet because I don't really have any good melee gloves in general. So the upgrade here is not that massive. The difference as you can see is that these have armor and the wrist does not. And uh, this one has an effect as well that is pretty good. So sometimes I might use the Masterwork and sometimes I might use the Death Touch. I think it depends mostly if I need to be a bit more tanky or not. And for the boots I was actually... I had the Bandos boots, so that is also a Bandos to a tier 90 upgrade. But the reason to why I don't have those anymore is because as soon as I got these in my last video, I just disassembled the Bandos boots. So I don't have them, but uh, there would be Bandos boots here in the uh, normal scenario if I didn't do that. But uh, let's just equip everything. And now I just need to augment these items, the uh, chest and the legs, and we're good to go. Now unfortunately I have not really gone that deep into invention yet so I don't really have that good of components. I can show you guys what components I have. I have some rare materials here but I'm not sure if that's going to be very useful right now. I have as you can see here 
a chance of getting like biting one to two which is uh, a pretty decent pvm uh, uh, perk and then also i can maybe somehow get like venom blood but i'm not sure like why do i need venom blood on masterwork i'm probably not going to melee araxa right now i'm doing it with magic to get the fang so i'm not really sure what i should go for maybe i should just go for like scavenging or something like that to get more materials until i do unlock that ancient invention when i can go for enhanced devotion as well as for example crackling and all these things that are very good i could do something like where's the magic components like something like this maybe and i can try to get crackling there's so many bad ones i can get as well along with that and uh, yeah as you guys saw i could uh, well i can only really make one armor gizmo right now because my protective components are so low so i'm really struggling with making some good perks right now i might just keep them unperked for now and uh, i mean i guess i can just try to do one here but uh uh, is it worth going for crackling? I'm probably just going to try to go for biting. So I'll go for biting right now and let's see if we can get it. Caution and biting. One chance, I guess. Cannot auto-retaliate while this item is equipped. And biting one. That is a very bad one. I don't even want to use that. I actually found some stuff that I could disassemble and get two more armor gizmos. And look at this. I got Energizer 2 and Crackling 2. And Crackling 2 is super good. I mean, it's rank 2, which is not the best, but it is a good perk in general. And Energizing 2 is kind of redundant because I don't really use Slice. And I'm going to put this on a melee item, so I'm not going to be using Piercing Shot and Rack. So um, I'm going to go with this, I think. I think this is a pretty good one. I'm going to apply this and Crackling 2... Actually, let me uh, show you guys what it does. So, periodically saps your combat target for 50% per rank of your weapon's damage. Or 10% per rank in PvP. So, every one minute, you basically just do a lot of damage. Uh, instantly. So, it is just free damage. And I'm going to be putting this on my chest. And we will have Crackling now on the chest. Only rank 2. And I'm going to try to get maybe Scavenging on this. Because you can put more Gizmos here. And that way I can get some more components when doing uh, PVMing. Honestly, I didn't even think about it. I had 60 ferocious rings in the bank and I just disassembled the 35 of them. And I had three precious components before and I have 11 now. They actually gave so many precious components, it's insane. So if you ever need these, you can just disassemble those ferocious rings if you have a lot of them as an Iron Man. Then you get some free components this way, and hopefully I can get scavenging right away too. And most enemies have a 25% chance to drop an additional high level resource. I mean, I'll take that. That's probably as good as I will get with these uh, components that I have. And let's just put in this on the chest. And that is now my augmented masterwork play body done until I get better perks. At least I have some perks on the legs now, I got Devoted 3 and Impatient 3, but I had to do it in two different gizmos, which is kind of unfortunate. But as perks don't stack and I can't get double scavenging and stuff like that, and double crackling, I just went for Devoted 3 and Impatient 3, which are pretty good perks in themselves. I mean, Devoted is super good for every rank, so this is 9% chance when you get hit. It will be like I'm having Devotion up, so 100% damage reduction for 3 seconds, which is very nice. Like 9% 9, 9 of the time that you get hit, you get 3 seconds of immunity, so that is a very good perk. And Impatient 3 is just 9% per rank for basic abilities to generate 3 extra adrenaline. So this is 27% chance at rank 3. And I'm going to do a Reaper assignment, and I'm going to do QBD, which is my current assignment, with the Masterwork gear, and I want to try this out and see how the perks are feeling and all that. So I think I have 6 KC to do, so let's just quickly do it. Admittedly, probably not the best boss to try out Devoted 3, and I guess Crackling was pretty good. I mean, it proc twice and it did like 2k damage, but Devoted is kind of, you know, useless here because I'm just soul splitting anyways. 146k first loot. Wait, what? That's... Kind of an insane drop, 944k. I didn't ex actually expect QBD to be able to give this high amount of money from one single drop. That's insane for an Iron Man. So QBD was not the ideal boss to try this on, but I absolutely know the perfect boss to try this on. I'm going to show you guys in just a second, and the last loot is... 
pretty good cash. So I want to try to AFK the ranged Rex boss because before I could kind of AFK it but I had to make sure that I didn't get one shot by the poison because I might have been on low HP because I did take a fair amount of damage with the Bandos gear I was using. But with the masterwork I might be able to just purely AFK the boss even with the Berserker aura. So I'm going to be using the Berserker aura as well as a Blood Nihil. And I'm just going to try to AFK this and see if I even have to eat any food in the one hour. Because I'm going to be extending the aura. There we go, one hour. And uh, yeah, let's see how this goes. After doing this for like 30 minutes and setting up a pretty optimal combat bar, I don't think I can exactly AFK it, but I can do it very easily. Like I don't really have to think about what I'm doing. The only thing I have to really focus on is like prey switching to ranged before the ranged hit comes, which can hit like 4k's, so I just have to avoid that. And then kind of with this revolution bar I can kind of AFK it. But uh, if I had like a tier 90 or tier 92 even melee weapon with good perks, then I can see it would be possible to uh, like 100% AFK this boss uh, by literally just tanking the 4k ranged hit. Because after that I would heal so much with soul split and I would be fine regardless. But for now I don't think I can exactly do that but I can almost AFK it. Oh my god, really? Uh, that is our spear shaft, which is one of the four pieces to make the Lanika spear, which is a very good slayer weapon actually, so happy to get one of the four pieces out of the way. After that, I think we're going to actually get a broadcast here in just a bit as well for 80 in all stats, because I'm only 8000 experience of 80 archaeology, and that is a grind I actually want to go into fairly soon to get all the way to 95 for Ancient Invention. Now that I've been doing some perks on my gear, I realize how good Ancient Invention is. But that is a step towards that, 80 archaeology, and I can now use Bane Maddox and the Imkando Maddox. But I don't have a Dragon one, so I can't do that. I think that's at least from Dragon, I'm not sure, but uh, a Bane Maddox I can absolutely make. Already had the Bane bars to make the Bane Maddox, so let's just add that to the tool belt and we can now kind of throw this away, I don't need it. So let's actually start this grind in this video. I have zero on the counter right now and the first thing I'm going to do is actually screen a lot of these things to get some materials so I can actually discover some artifacts which is going to give me a lot of experience. So I have a lot of screening to do and I think I should be getting like 5 experience per time I do this. And maybe it's more actually, I'm not sure, but somewhere around that and it's going to take, yeah, 5 experience. A long time, a very long time to do this, but after that I can actually get into archaeology training for real. So now we're into the excavation part of it and I got like 8000 experience for screening all that if that's relevant. And uh, I'm going to be doing this for maybe like 7 hours or something like that. I think 7 hours or 10 hours per video of archaeology is probably a good amount to not get completely burned out and have the whole video just take like ages to get out. So I'm going to do like maybe 10 hours. I'll probably do 10 hours of archaeology and let's see where we can end up. Actually working on a mystery right now and it is to upgrade the wingsuit. I made the wingsuit and got like 10,000 experience and I just have to fly between different areas and collect upgrades. And I'm not sure if I will need a higher archaeology level for the uh, higher upgrades, but uh, hopefully I will be able to complete that. Let's see if I can apply this upgrade, and another upgrade, yes, it seems like none of them really have a requirement. If you have 76 or 77 that it required to actually make the wingsuit, it seems like you can just pick up all the upgrades. But yeah, I think I already like accidentally got all the upgrades I needed, because I just completed the mystery by flying through this. And I didn't actually die from the electricity and I got 12,000 archaeology experience and I got the wings out mystery. So why do we even need these higher uh, upgrades? Let's uh, actually go up here and these should be the ones I need, but maybe these have a higher requirement. Uh, let's see. Um, I guess I can just take them anyways. Well, let's just get all the upgrades then. Maybe there's another mystery. So these are called Gravitron Repulsors and there are some rocks out there that has the same name and you can actually click on them. So I'm going now with both of the upgrades, see what happens if I do click on them. 
Okay, so nothing can happen when I pressed it, and it is an icon of a mystery, so there's probably something I have to do before I can actually do this mystery. It's probably for higher level, because it says, in fact, I felt a bit like when I entered the portal to get here in the first place, I wonder. So yeah, most likely something else that I have to do first. I was kind of lucky to get a daily archaeology challenge that I could extend, and I got 64,000 experience from that, which gave me 81. And I might as well just set a new target. And I unlocked like three different areas, I think, at 81. And I'm going to just get all the different artifacts that you can uncover. And uh, so I can complete the collection logs. And then I should be getting maybe to 84 before I go to the next area. Or I think it's maybe 83. And then I can unlock some more areas after that. Jesus, I'm so lucky. I uh, logged out after the last clip because it was really late. I log in and I have a daily archaeology challenge that... I can't extend, I have to get some whisk wax, but uh, after that I'm definitely going to extend this. I'm working on some Caradet mysteries to be able to do the higher levels there, because I haven't actually done much archaeology there at all, but I did get one of these complete tomes, and I think it's going to give me like 20,000 experience if I just click here, which is very nice, 21,000 almost, and then we have the extended daily challenge to complete, which is 66,000, so now we are only 34,000 off 82. There we go, got the last page of the mystery I'm working on. I think I have to transcribe all of them, or maybe I don't have to, but I'm just always going to do this when I do the pages. And now I should be able to talk to this guy, and I should be able to repair this. Yeah, there we go, I got the uh, thing I have to put in, and now I should be completing another mystery so I can actually enter this door. Maybe I have to press these first, I'm not sure, but uh, yeah, let's see if I can solve this. Code is shadow, blood, smoke, and ice button. So let's see if this works now. I tried just a random combo and it didn't work. So I had to look this up. And hopefully this is going to finish the mystery. And I can actually enter the prison here. And then inside here I can actually get a ring I think. Or a necklace. I'm not sure exactly what it is. So I will be able to enter this area right here. Which is for a bit higher level archaeology. Got both the Legatus Pendant and the Pontiflex Signet Ring, and if I wear this, maybe I just have to have it in my inventory, not sure, but I can now go through this area, and I should be able to uncover these, and I think they should be for level 81. Now, I do believe that after completing this log, which I'm going to be doing now, I think I have completed five unique collections, yes I have, and that is relevant because... Now I have completed another step for the associate rank that's gone now and actually two different ones only left, uh, the discoverer and the restorer. So I do I only have to do one of these, complete all the listed achievements and attend the qualification ceremony? But I had two before here and one of them was solve 10 of the greatest mysteries and that is kind of gone now. I wonder why that is, but uh, regardless I have to do... I'm very close to this one, so if it gets completed when I'm done with this, then I'm almost associate rank. I'm going to be working towards that on this area, the Warforged, because this is the only area for level 81 I haven't got all the artifacts for. And I just got a key here, and this seems to be for a mystery, so I will have to look into that. I'm going to be putting a picture on the screen right now. This is all the keys that you need for completing a mystery, and it is a higher tier mystery, so I guess I can just put this in the bank for now. Again, every single time I get a pet, I am kind of AFK, and I just got the archaeology pet at 2.7 million experience, which is extremely lucky. So that is another pet we're going to take a look at in just a bit. What I was actually doing here though was not going for the pet of course, I was getting the last key, and I also got the last piece of a tetra compass. And I can actually make this, I think, or I have, I have to get these as well, but they are very easy to get. And this is like a, a clue scroll, basically, for archaeology. We will look into that in a bit. But I just got the last key here. And it was actually not that bad to get all the keys. But I just have to put them into the door, I'm going to assume. And if I do that, I'm going to unlock a forge in here that unlocks the uh, Imkandu Matok if I get a Dragon Matok. So that is a grind I have to go for as well. And this is a mystery. But um, yeah, after this, I'm actually going to get two more Imkandu... Uh, Matok pieces because I already have two and then I have to go to big game hunter and get that one in 100 drop of the dragon Matok. When I do get the four pieces for the Imkando Matok, I can go here and make it if I do have a dragon one and it is a, a one in 100 drop rate from big game hunter so it shouldn't be that bad 
And uh, I'm going to go now and actually complete this tetra compass. I just have to get those pieces. And then I'm going to complete the tetra compass thing as well. Got the compass completed and I guess I just press power here and after a few seconds it is going to be powered by the monolith. And I'm going to probably need a lot of these because uh, there are some things you can get from this that are very rare. But uh, now I just have to find where I have to dig I guess. That was like one minute to find where I had to go. It's super easy but uh, yeah let's see what we get. We get this ancient casket and this just contains a lot of archaeology supplies so it's very nice. But there is a shadowy key you can get which unlocks a level 99 like the best Maddock in the game. And it is very very rare to get that so if I would get that here that would be insane. It is the shadowy key and we did not get that but 1.3 million reward. Bandos pages, ancient page, elite glue scroll, this is 22,000 experience. Material manual, death mask, damage, some artifacts here. That is kind of cool, I want to see actually what these uh, give in experience. But yeah, let's just bank all of this and let's check these. What level are these for? 99? Uh, okay, and this one is 113. So I guess uh, I will have to put these in the bank for now. Somehow in like 10 minutes I managed to get two more tetra compass pieces which is pretty insane because they have like a 1 in 1500 chance of dropping. I also got the lump of imcando metal. That means I only need one last piece plus the dragon maddock to be able to make the imcando maddock and that is going to be something I will go for in the next video. And I appreciate you all watching this one, but this is going to be the end of this video. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, please leave a like. It really helps getting my videos out there. And uh, subscribe if you want to see my future content. Also, a link to my Discord is always at the top of the description. But I'll see you in the next one, guys. Hope you have some luck in RuneScape. And have a good day. Bye-bye.